Hi, I'm Joe James, and in this video I'm going to explain to you how to use Carnot maps to solve Boolean algebra problems. So Carnot maps are used to facilitate converting between truth tables and Boolean expressions. You can convert both ways using Carnot maps. I'm primarily going to show you how to convert from truth tables to Boolean expressions. And they make deriving a Boolean expression much easier than if you were just doing it from the truth table. Because a Carnot map is an intermediate, it's a graphical step that's easier to figure out. And you can map two or more inputs to one output. That's what Carnot maps are used for. And all the values have to be Boolean, 0 or 1. So here's an example. We have a truth table, has two inputs, A and B. So these are just counting order, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And we have one output called Z. In all these examples, we only have one output, z. So first, we're going to draw an empty Carnot map. We have a's across the top, two possible values, 0 and 1, and b's down the left side. Again, two possible values, 0 and 1. Now we're going to populate this table with the outputs. So we can see that when a and b are both 0, z is 0, right? So this cell is going to be 0, and the other three cells are all going to be 1. Next, we're going to group, or draw a circle or a square, around all the ones. We need to circle all the ones, but we need to do it in groups. So here we draw one group, and here we draw another one. It's a rectangle. We can draw rectangles around the ones. In the case of the green rectangle, we can see that A is 1. If A is 1, the output is 1. And here in the blue rectangle, we can see that, well, B is 1. When b is 1, the output is 1. So our Boolean expression we're going to derive from this is, look, either a is 1 or b is 1, then the output is 1. So z equals a or, this plus sign means or, a or b. So the KMAP process that we just went through, and we're going to go through in two more examples. Given a Boolean truth table of inputs and one output value, Sketch an empty Carnot map, inputs, if you have four variables, it'll be A, B across the top, and C, D down the left side. We just had two variables. We had A on the top and B on the left side. Cells are going to be ordered in gray code order. I'll show you in the next example how that works, what that means. But basically, adjacent cells can only differ by one bit. Okay? Number two, we're going to populate the outputs into the K-map. We just did that in a previous example. We're going to populate the outputs into the empty Carnot map. And then number three, we're going to draw rectangles around all the ones using the following rules. I've got a list of rules I'm going to show you in a second. And number four, we're going to derive a Boolean expression. So we're going to follow that process for the next two examples. Let's look at this one with three input variables. A, B, and C. And there's one output again, Z. First we'll draw the Carnot map. Now, we talked about gray code order. So, here we have A and B across the top. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. Now that's weird. Usually when we're counting we say 0, 1, 1, 0, and then 1, 1. But what gray code means is that we cannot change two bits at the same time when we go one cell over. So we can't go from 0, 1 to 1, 0 because two bits would change. So we're reversing the order of these two items, right? These two columns. doesn't matter. We have to use gray code order. That just means that no two bits can change in consecutive cells. And then we have C down the left side. Possible input values for C, 0 and 1. And then we populate all of the output values. We can see we have two zeros. One where A and B are zeros and C is 1, 0, 0, 1, Z is a 0, and then we have 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, we have a 0. So that's our Carnot map. Those are the input values and the output values. Now we're going to cluster all the ones. We need to group them with rectangles. This may look nice to you. Now, you haven't seen the rules yet, though, so you don't know this is a violation of the rules. The green one is a circle around all the top four ones. 
the blue one covers all the bottom two ones. That's great, but this is not allowable. And I'll show you the detail in the rules in a second. What we want to do is draw the biggest circles we can. And in this case, we can draw a very big rectangle around four ones. And it's okay for overlapping. The blue and the green overlap, that's fine. So we can see that when C is zero, the output is one. Or when B, which is the right value here, B is one, the output is one. So our result is that Z equals either B or C naught, which means C equals zero. That is how we derive a Boolean expression from those inputs using a Carnot map. Now let's take a look at the rules. The rules for grouping the cells containing ones. The groups must contain only one or X. You haven't seen X yet. X just means don't care. It means I don't care what the output is for those inputs. I don't care if it's one, I don't care if it's zero. You can draw a rectangle around anything that's a one or an X. No zeros can be within your rectangles though. Next rule. Groups must contain 1, 2, 4, 8, or 16, 2 to the n cells, right? A multiple of 2 cells. So we're not going to be drawing funny shaped rectangles around 6 cells or 3 cells or something funky like that. Nope, not allowed. Next rule, each cell containing a 1 must be in at least one group, so we have to circle every 1. Next, groups may be horizontal or vertical. We can't draw diagonal rectangles. Not allowed. No diagonals. Next rule. Groups should be as large as possible. I just showed you in the previous example the violation where, no, we can't draw a circle around only two items if there are actually four possible. So we want to draw the biggest rectangles that we can with all ones or x's in them. Next rule. There should be as few groups as possible. So we want to circle all the ones with as few circles as possible. Next rule. Groups can overlap as I showed you in the last example. And lastly, the groups can wrap around the table. This one's a little hard to understand, but you'll see in the next example. The leftmost cell in a row can be grouped with the rightmost cell, and the top cell in a column can be grouped with the bottom cell. So there's a wrap around is allowed. You'll see in this next example what I mean. So here is an example of a truth table with four input variables, A, B, C, D. And we have, again, one output variable, z. So let's draw a blank Carnot map, and then we'll just go ahead and populate it. But we have a and b across the top row here. And again, you can see the gray code ordering, where we're not changing any two bits consecutively. And the same down this left side, where we have c and d. We're using gray code ordering, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. It's important to remember this. So that is our Carnot map, and then we've populated in all the z values for each of the input values. Now we're going to draw circles around all the ones. We're going to group all these ones. Now when I talked about wrapping, you see how there's a one here and also a one here. So we can actually draw a circle around these four ones in green. That's going to wrap around this edge of the table. So that's a legitimate maneuver. And then we need another circle to cover these two ones. So we've met all of the rules. We circled all the ones. We did it with as few circles as possible. We made circles as big as we can. Yes, we can wrap around the edge of the table or the top of the table if we choose to. Those are our two circles. Now let's derive the Boolean expression. So first let's look at the green. In the green we can see, let's see, um, A is 0 here and it's 1 here. So we can't, can't say anything conclusive about that. B is 0 here and 0 here. So in other words, B naught. It's always B 0. And then let's look at C. Okay, C is always 0 in both of these, but D changes. So B naught, C naught is what this square means. B naught, C naught. Because B is always 0 and C is always 0. So B naught, C naught. Or, in this case, we have, well, let's see, B is a 1 in these two columns, these two middle columns, and then C is a 1 and D is a 0. So we need B and C to be both 1s, and then we need D 0. So B, C, D naught. So either B naught, C naught, or B, C, D naught. That's our solution. 
So it's a little bit tricky sometimes to figure out after you've drawn these, these circles, these clusters, to figure out, well, what's the Boolean expression from that? But actually, you just analyze what are the constants for those circled cells. And if we had don't care, I mentioned to you earlier about don't care. Here's an example. Let's say we had don't cares. We had x here. We don't care what the output is for these given inputs. Then we can draw a bigger blue circle. And when we draw that bigger blue circle, our Boolean expression is bc. It's just bc, right? Because b is 1 in these two middle columns, and c is 1 in these two bottom two rows. So this becomes bc if we have don't cares in these two cells. So you'll have don't cares where you can either circle them or not circle them, whatever you choose, just so it enables you to make bigger circles. That's your goal. So that wraps up this video on Carnal Maps. I hope this video was helpful for you. I really hope it was clear. If so, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.